Okay, in this video I'm going to do an example of exponential regression and there's actually a few different regression procedures that you can use for an exponential function but we're just going to focus on one in this class and this is the one that's most commonly used and it gets uh, it's based on linear least squares regression. So the idea is we want to come up with an exponential function that best fits the data and I haven't put any story problem around this. I haven't put any real life um, situation but an exponential function, remember as we go out to the left, it has a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. And as we go out to the right, it grows without bound. So we want, whoops, I want to be in green. Let me switch colors here. We want a function that looks something like this, that fits the data well. That fits the data well. And remember that with least squares, what we did was we looked at the squared vertical distances from the line and we chose the one that made that a minimum. Well, the way we're going to go about doing this exponential regression is not the same as we did the linear regression. Remember that when we did the linear least squares regression, what we're assuming is that if you fix an x value, say 4 here, the y values are normally distributed about whatever y values on this line with a standard deviation that's the same um, across all x values. And there's a couple of reasons that doesn't make sense. First of all, if I'm over here, it does not make sense to put a normal distribution on these y values because in most real life situations, negative y values doesn't make, don't make sense. Instead, only positive numbers make sense. Also, it tends to be that um, for bigger x values, your range gets larger. Okay, for example, if we're trying to predict population, if our model predicted 2,000 and the population was actually 2,500, then that was a pretty good prediction, but not real close. Okay. If, on the other hand, our model predicted 2 million and the population actually been, ends up being 2,500,000, that is extremely close. When you have bigger numbers, you expect a larger um, variation in these y values. You expect a larger standard deviation. Because of that, what we do is we take this, uh, this model right here, this y equals a e to the rx, and we turn it into a linear model. So if I have y equals a times e to the power of rx, remember the r is usually called the exponential growth rate, then if I take the natural log of both sides, whoops, That gives me the natural log of a e to the rx. Okay, and then I can use my log rules to break this apart. Natural log of y is natural log of a. If I have a product inside the log, then I can separate it into the sum of two logs. And then natural log of e to the rx is just r times x. Now we have a linear function. Okay? Our slope is r and our y-intercept is natural log of a. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the natural log of the y-values and then we're going to perform linear regression. Okay, so instead of using the point 1, 1, I'm going to use the point 1 natural log of 1. Instead of using the point 3, 2, I'm going to use the point 3, natural log of 2, instead of using the point 4, 2, I'll use the point 4, natural log of 2, etc. And now I do linear regression on these guys. Linear least squares. And what this ends up doing is it ends up looking at the rate of growth as being the thing that's normally distributed. Okay, so to do this, we're going to plug this into Wolfram Alpha. So let me pull that up here. And I'm going to do a linear fit on, let's see, 1 comma natural log of zero, 1. That just ends up being 0, but I'll go ahead and put that in there. Uh, 3 comma natural log of 2, 4 comma natural log of 2, 6 comma natural log of 5, and 7 comma 
natural log of 8. And doing that linear um, least squares best fit gives me 0.339869 times x minus 0.412416. So if I plug that in here, I get that natural log of y is equal to, this is our least squares line of best fit. We had 0.339869x minus 0.412416. Okay, so this coefficient in front of x, that's my m. Or excuse me, that's the slope, so that's r. Let's rewrite that. That's r. That's our growth rate. Exponential rate of growth. Since it's positive, it's a growth. If it were negative, it were decay. And this is the natural log of a, the natural log of the starting value. a is just what we get when we plug in x equals 0. Okay. So I have the r is about uh, 0.339869 and then natural log of a is about negative 0.412416 so if I want to get a I raise um, e to the power of each side and I get the a is about e to the negative 0.412416 and actually I need to use my desktop calculator here it turns out that the computer calculator doesn't have an e to the power of button at least I don't know where it's at if it does uh, 0.4 e to the power of 0.412416 and that gives me about 0.662049 So our model here is y equals a e to the rx, which means y equals 0 0.662049 times e to the 0.339869x. Now there's not a standard name for this procedure. Um, I like to call it extended least squares, which I think I've heard it called before somewhere, or extended linear least squares. The idea is that we're using linear least squares, but this model isn't linear. So we do a transformation um, to the model, in this case we do the natural log of both sides so that it is linear, and then we apply linear least squares regression to that result to get our regression function. Okay, so this is the method that we're going to talk about, and the method that's most commonly used for regression on an exponential function.